Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Monday, February 1st, 2021. What a joy it is to be able to spend this time together with you in God's word as the Lord uses his word to strengthen our faith in him and increase our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our savior. Our psalm for today is Psalm 28. Lord, I call to you, my rock, do not be deaf to me. If you remain silent to me, I will be like those going down to the pit. Listen to the sound of my pleading when I cry to you for help, when I lift up my hands toward your holy sanctuary. Do not drag me away with the wicked, with the evildoers, who speak in friendly ways with their neighbors while malice is in their hearts. Repay them according to what they have done, according to the evil of their deeds. Repay them according to the work of their hands. Give them back what they deserve. Because they do not consider what the Lord has done or the work of his hands, he will tear them down and not rebuild them. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the sound of my pleading. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am, am helped. Therefore, my head, heart celebrates and I give thanks to him with my song. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is a stronghold of salvation for his anointed. Save your people, bless your possession, shepherd them and carry them forever. Our Psalm just asked the Lord to shepherd his people. As we continue reading in chapter 11 of Zechariah, we're going to hear the Lord's judgment against the shepherds of his people who did not care for his sheep and also his promise to shepherd them. The Lord my God says this, shepherd the flock intended for slaughter. Those who buy them slaughter them, but are not punished. Those who sell them say, blessed be the Lord because I have become rich. Even their own shepherds have no compassion for them. Indeed, I will no longer have compassion on the inhabitants of the land. This is the Lord's declaration. Instead, I will turn everyone over to his neighbor and his king. They will devastate the land, and I will not rescue it from their hand. So I shepherded the flock intended for slaughter, the oppressed of the flock. I took two staffs, calling one favor and the other union, and I shepherded the flock. In one month, I got rid of three shepherds. I became impatient with them, and they also detested me. Then I said, I will no longer shepherd you. Let what is dying die, and let what is perishing perish. Let the rest devour each other's flesh. Next, I took my staff called favor and cut it in two, annulling the covenant I had made with all the peoples. It was annulled on that day, and so the oppressed of the flock who were watching me knew that it was the word of the Lord. Then I said to them, if it seems right to you, give me my wages, but if not, keep them. So they weighed my wages, 30 pieces of silver. Throw it to the potter, the Lord said to me, this magnificent price I was valued by them. So I took the 30 pieces of silver and threw it into the house of the Lord, to the potter. Then I cut into my second staff, union, annulling the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. The Lord also said to me, take the equipment of a foolish shepherd, I am about to raise up a shepherd in the land who will not care for those who are perishing, and he will not seek the lost or heal the broken. He will not sustain the healthy, but he will devour the flesh of the fat sheep and tear off their hooves. Woe to the worthless shepherd who deserts the flock. May a sword strike his arm and his right eye. May his arm wither away and his right eye go completely blind. In our New Testament reading for today, we hear Paul's final instructions to Timothy as we complete the last chapter of Paul's second letter to Timothy. I solemnly charge you before God and Christ Jesus, who is going to judge the living and the dead, and because of his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but according to their own desires will multiply teachers for themselves because they have an itch to hear what they want to hear. 
They will turn away from hearing the truth and will turn aside to myths. But as for you, exercise self-control in everything, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time for my departure is close. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. There is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and, all, and not only to me, but to all those who have loved his appearing. Make every effort to come to me soon, because Demas has deserted me, since he loved this present world, and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescanes has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Bring Mark with you, for he is useful to me in the ministry. I have sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak I left in Troas with Carpus, as well as the scrolls, especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did great harm to me. The Lord will repay him according to his works. Watch out for him yourself, because he strongly opposed our words. At my first defense, no one stood by me, but everyone deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, so that I might fully preach the word and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil work and will bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet Prisca and Aquila and the household of Onesiphorus. Erastus has remained at Corinth. I left Trophimus sick at Miletus. Make every effort to come before winter. Eubulus greets you, as do Pudanes, Linus, Claudia, and all the brothers and sisters. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you all. Our writing for today comes from John Chrysostom. Let, it, let us then return from the communion table like lions breathing fire, having become terrible to, to the devil, thinking on our head, Christ, and on the love that he has shown for us. Our Lord says, I feed you with my own flesh, desiring that you all be nobly born and holding forth good hopes for your future. I have willed to become your brother. For your sake, I shared in flesh and blood and in turn, I give you the flesh and the blood by which I became your kinsman. This blood causes the image of our king to be fresh within us. It produces beauty unspeakable and prevents the nobleness of our souls from wasting away. It nourishes our souls and works in them a mighty power. This blood, if rightly taken, drives away devils and keeps them far from us, while it calls the angels and the Lord of angels to us. For whenever they see the Lord's blood, devils flee and angels run together. This blood poured forth and washed all the world clean. St. Paul uttered many wise sayings concerning it in the, the epistle to the Hebrews. This blood cleansed the secret place and the holy of holies. And if the type of this blood had such great power in the temple of the Hebrews and in the midst of Egypt, when smeared on the doorposts, much more the reality. The type sanctified the golden altar. Without it, the blood of the sacrifices, the high priest dared not enter into the secret place. It even consecrated priests. It cleansed sins in the Old Testament. But if the blood of the sacrifices was but a type and had such power, if death so shuddered at the shadow, tell me how would it not have dreaded the very reality? The blood of Christ is the salvation of our souls, by it, the soul is washed, is beautiful, and is inflamed. This blood causes our understanding to be more bright than fire and our soul more beaming than gold. This blood was poured forth and opened heaven. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, God Who Made the Earth and Heaven. Guard us waking, guard us sleeping, and when we die, may we in your mighty keeping all peaceful lie. When the last dread call shall wake us, then, O Lord, do not forsake us, but to reign in glory take us with you on high. And we pray. 
Lord God, Heavenly Father, your Son fought the good fight of faith and was obedient unto death, even death on the cross, pouring out his blood as a peace offering between you and us. Keep us faithful unto death so we may receive the crown of righteousness that the righteous judge will reward us with, with reward us with on that day, having waited in hope and love for his appearing. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Thank you all so much for spending this time together with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.